Hey everyone, we're here again for our time in the Psalms. Today we're looking at Psalms chapter 18, verse 16 through 29. Last week we looked at verses 1 through 15. And so we're going to get the middle section of Psalm 18 today, and then next week we'll finish off Psalm 18. So let's get started. We're going to read this in three sections today. First, we're going to look at verses 16 through 19. So let's read that together. It says, He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He pulled me out of deep water. He rescued me from my powerful enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too strong for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out of a spacious, out to a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. Today we're going to be looking at some things that uh, David believed and responded in. First that he, thing he believes is that the Lord is good. He believes that God is good. And we say God is good, we say all the time, right? But here he says God is good because when he cries out, God hears him. See, David's crying out and God hears him because God hears his people. Because God loves his people. God wants to be in relationship with his people. That's why he gave us Jesus. So that we could be made righteous in his sight. So that we can have a relationship. But here, look at what David does when he calls the Lord good. He says, the Lord, he reached down from on high and took hold of me. In verse 17, he said, he rescued me. In verse 18, he said, the Lord was my support. And again, in verse 19, he said, he rescued me. He proclaims the Lord is good. Now, if the Lord is truly good, that's going to impact how you live your life, how you interact with people, how you do work at your job, how you interact with your family, how you love your spouse, all those things. If the Lord truly is good, it should most certainly impact your life. So let's see how it impacted the life of David. And that's where we're going to read verses 20 through 24. It says, The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. He repaid me according to the cleanness of my hands. For I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not turned from my God to wickedness. Indeed, I let all his ordinances guide me and have not disregarded his statutes. I was blameless toward him and kept myself from my iniquity. So the Lord repaid me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his sight. So you have David first saying that the Lord is good. And because he's good, David's going to do these things. This is how David responds to the goodness of the Lord. Verse 20, he says, look, I'm going to make sure I am righteous and my hands are clean. Verse 21, he says, I'm going to keep the ways of the Lord. Verse 22, he says, his ordinances will guide me. Verse 23, he says, I will keep myself from iniquity. And then verse 24, he says, the Lord is always faithful before me and I will be faithful to him. See, that's how David responds to the goodness of God. So it begs the question to us is, how are you responding to the truth that the Lord is good? Does that impact your life? Does it impact how you think, how you see the world, how you interact with other people? Does it impact how you live? It should. If the Lord is truly good, you should want to glorify him every opportunity you can. And that means turning from wickedness, like David said, and trying to be guided by the word of the Lord, which is the Bible. What's the role the Bible plays in your life? How are you battling sin? Are you repenting from sin in your life? Are you turning from it? Are you trying to weed sin out? That's how you can tell if you're responding to the goodness of the Lord the right way. And then we're going to finish up with verses 25 through 29, and we're going to focus on one verse there, and it says, so verse 25, it says, with the faithful, you prove yourself faithful. With the blameless, you prove yourself blameless. With the pure, you prove yourself pure. But with the crooked, you prove yourself shrewd. For you rescue an oppressed people, but you humble those with haughty eyes. Lord, you light my lamp. My God illuminates my darkness. With you, I can attack a barricade. And with my God, I can leap over a wall. I want us to look at verse 28 again, where it says, Lord, you light my lamp. My God illuminates my darkness. God is our light. He shows us where to go, how to live, how we can glorify him. See, too many times in this life, we turn to other things. We turn to man's wisdom. We turn to self-help groups. We turn to the internet, social media, friends, family. We do all these things. We go to help look in all these random places when the first place we should go is to the Lord. 
We try to live our lives according to all these principles and good things. But really, we should be living our lives according to the ordinances of the Lord, according to the Word of God. Don't fall in that trap. Remember, you want your light, you, you want your lamp light? Go to the Lord. You want um, a lighted path? It's the Word of God. We're going to get later in Psalm 119, 105. It says, The Lord is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You want to be guided through life? You turn to the Word of God. Follow Him. Don't follow your own wisdom. Don't follow the, the wisdom of man or the reasoning of man. Follow the Word of God. Why do we want to follow the Word of God? Because the Lord is good. Hope you have a great day. Look forward to next week.